The recovery continues in Bend County and other parts of North Arkansas from the devastating storms that hit us on May 26th. In the midst of that, one local organization is trying to ensure that the story of the storm is preserved. We're going to talk about that on this week's edition of the Know the News podcast. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Perosic, your Know the News podcast this week. Joining me on the podcast, I'm pleased to welcome Serena Barnett. She's director of the Rogers Historical Museum. Thank you so much, Serena, for joining us this morning. Well, thank you, Dave, for having me. Um, so, you know, first of all, as we all know, Rogers was hit very hard by this storm. Um, one to just curious. What was your personal experience? How were you personally affected? And what was uh, the effect on the historical museum? Well, um, I, my, my home was actually, I live in Southwest Rogers, so we fortunately didn't have any um, damage. But, you know, as far as personal, I mean, the museum is in downtown Rogers. And that was where my first thought was what what is going on at the museum and what will need to be done to to address any damage that would have been done at the tornado and you know Sunday morning as soon as we could my my staff we we assessed the damage and luckily found that very little had been done we lost a few trees um our heritage apple orchard was among the the fatal fatalities of the the trees um but overall we we were very lucky um uh, after seeing the rest of uh, downtown Rogers and, and other areas that were affected, um, it could have been so much worse um, overall. And and I feel our community is also very lucky um, that more lives weren't lost in this storm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I want to mention that our Rogers City reporter, Campbell Roper, is writing a story about the effort that you and the Historical Museum are undertaking to document the storm that we're going to publish this weekend. Um, so could you share with us a little bit about that project? Sure. So our our mission here at the Rogers Historical Museum is to preserve our history. And, uh, you know, this event is a very memorable event in our history. And we, we definitely want to ensure that we save any documentation, photographs, stories from this event so that we will be able to have that for um, people in our communities for the future. And uh, now is the time to, to be doing that. Well, it's, you know, people are, are still remembering um, the events that took place. And um, so we decided to, to reach out to our community and ask them to share with us their photographs, their personal stories of the event. And um, one of the, th the things that I, I just think is amazing is our community has come together and we have helped each other in ways that you just don't hear that in, in other stories that have been similar, you know, other disasters in other parts of the country and other cities. And it was immediate. People were, you know, literally their homes destroyed, but they were out there helping feed the community and um, helping clean up. And it's just amazing to me that um, we have such a heartfelt community around us here. And I wanted, I want us here at the museum to to encapsulate those stories, to remember those stories, um, because that is truly. Um, that the, the, the biggest story that has come out of this horrible event is um, our community, what, what we have done to, to bounce back from this. Yeah. Yeah, and so you've put out the call for, for photos and mm -hmm. um, Yes, uh, um, we're, we're asking for people to share with us their, their photographs and if, if they're willing to, to write down their their personal story their experience um, with the, the storm whether it's you know maybe they had damage to their home or maybe they were um, part of um, some of the support organizations that were going out and, and helping either raise funds or um, to feed um, 
the the workers or um, to help you know put put roofs back on ho homes you know whatever they were they, they were uh, working on to help support the uh, rebuilding and reconstruction of of our community here and uh, and we're collecting ongoing um, we don't have an end date to this um, so if you think you know in a month's time you know like, oh I, I really want to be able to share my story and, and everything with the museum but please do we are um, very, very willing at any time to accept your your pictures and your stories on this. Are you taking audio, video? Yeah, well? actually, um, we we actually do already have a couple of videos that people have shared with us, and um, those are great because you really can see and hear everything as it's happening in a video, which which you know you can't really. Uh, don't get translated as well in a photograph. So yeah, I mean, we are, we're happy to take videos um, as well as photographs. And you've collected uh, quite a bit so far? Uh, Actually, yes. Um, we've, we've had about 50 different entries and um, they are from all over Rogers and Decatur, uh, the primary areas, a few Bentonville ones. And uh, it, it's amazing to see I mean, every every image tells a story. Um, you know, these, every image it re it relates to a family or a business that was impacted, and you know, it, it goes back to the stories of the people of our community is what what these photos will be able to allow us to tell the story of. Anything in, in particular that's really um, surprised <laughs> you or really, I mean, shocked you from what you've seen so far? Well, just how how close of a call it was for some folks. Uh, some, I mean, we, for instance, one one photograph was submitted to to us by a grandfather who their um, I think six year old granddaughter was staying the night with them, and the they got to their safe space, and within thirty seconds, her bedroom roof collapsed on her bed. And the picture is of her bedroom and, and all the destruction. And it just it just makes your heart ache to think that they were that poor girl was that close mm -hmm. um, to another, you know, end result. So um, it's it's quite something to see these these images. Um, and someday we, we do hope to be able to you know, use them in some kind of an exhibit or, or share them in some way. But right now we're just, just at the collecting phase of it. Yeah. I wanted to ask too, you know, where does the storm, the May 26 storm fit in with the history of other natural disasters that have affected Rogers? You know, uh, I, immediately I think of the 2009 ice storm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was, had, gotten here about four months earlier um <laughs> so uh but how does may 26 compare to some of the other natural disasters in our area well this one definitely is is the worst one we've ever experienced um there was a tornado that came through rogers in 2019 i'm, I'm sure you've seen if you've been on sure. social media you've seen the the weather um, meteorologists sharing the photograph of the the two storm paths that just they're uh, lined up with each other they're very close um, but that was the only other tornado in Rogers that we have ever experienced um, there have been other tornadoes in the county of course you know you always hear you know Salem Springs usually on the west side of the county um, is affected by tor tornadoes and then there was in 1947, a tornado that went through Brightwater, which is just northeast of Rogers. And it did kill seven individuals, mo um, most of which were one family. Um, but that was the last um, time we had such a close call um, with the tornado and, until now. Mm -hmm. And um, you're seeing just, you know, uh, downtown Rogers, you're there, you're right there. Um, mm. Talking, you know, I think you, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but what are you seeing in terms of the cleanup there? 
Cleanup is, is doing well. Um, there's still some piles of tree debris and um, in the residential areas and, and uh, there is still, of course, some building damage. The historic district did receive um, some wind damage, some roof damage. Um, some of the businesses are still closed because they um, their roof um, allowed water to get in. And, and so the water damage inside is what really devastated downtown, the business district more. Mm -hmm. um, but then you go north just a little bit out of the, the historic district proper and, you know, places like Suzy Q, I mean, totally demolished. Um, and uh, so, you, and then you go down Walnut, of course, and that's, it was even more impacted and that's going to take quite a lot longer to, to rebuild. Um, but the, really, it, it's only been a month since the tornado. And in that time, it has been amazing to see the change um, of, of how we have cleaned up so quickly from such a devastating, damaging storm. And uh, I, uh, I imagine that, you know, it only, uh, as the summer continues, it'll, it'll start looking more like our hometown again. Well, um, for people who want to submit uh, memorabilia, uh, mm -hmm. photos, whatnot, uh, you're not hard to find, but uh, no. uh, how do yeah. you want that submitted? Yeah, we are located um, at 313 South 2nd Street at the corner of Cherry and 2nd in downtown Rogers the, in the historic area. And um, people can submit their stories and um, photographs to us either at museum at rogersar.gov or you can go to that Facebook post that we put out. I, it's pinned at the top of our page and uh, you can submit them in the comments there. Or you're wel welcome to mail them to the museum at um, Rogers Historical Museum Attention May 2024 Storm Archives at 322 South 2nd Street, Rogers, Arkansas 72756. Um, so there's many ways that you can, can share them with us or you can even come in person and, and um, drop them off um, at our front desk. So, um, and uh, you mentioned memorabilia too. And yes, we are accepting objects that survived the storm, um, things that um, help us tell the story in a, in a more physical way. Uh, the city of Rogers donated one of the city flags that was, hang um, it, it was uh, hanging up in the uh, Rogers Cemetery. And it's, it's just stripped and frayed. Um, but uh, it helps us to tell the story of, of just how much wind we received in, in this storm and, and what, what that kind of storm does to things. And uh, it just, uh, yeah, so we're, we're taking um, any, anything to do with the, with the storm to help us tell the story down, down in the future. Thank you so much, Serena, for joining us today. Really Thank appreciate it. Thank you, Dave, it. for having me. If you're enjoying this podcast, consider a newspaper subscription to the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette or the River Valley Democrat Gazette. We have a special offer for our podcast listeners, so visit nwaonline.com slash nwapodcast to get started. You can also click the subscribe button on our websites, nwaonline.com and rivervalleydemocratgazette.com, or call us at 479-684-5509 and be sure to say that you're a podcast listener. Now back to the show. Before I go, I want to mention a few other stories we have coming your way over the next few days, in addition to the Rogers Historical Museum project. A developer has a site set on turning a motel in Fayetteville on the south side of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard into affordable housing units. Fayetteville reporter Stacy Ryburn reports. State agencies in Oklahoma and Arkansas are finishing up a two-state water management plan for the Illinois River, with two public hearings occurring earlier this week. Doug Thompson was there for both hearings, and he'll boil down for us what was said. The Excel Center at Goodwill Industries is holding its first graduation for students from the organization's Springdale campus this weekend. That's an adult high school for people 19 and older. Education reporter Al Gaspany will be there to cover the happy event. And in Washington County government, 
Lance Johnson is shifting from his job as Chief of Staff to Commissioner of Public Buildings. Tom Sissom will explain that. From the River Valley, Sadie LeCicero will tell us about some grant money that three area counties received to work on their historic courthouses. And Monica Brick will have a story on what the City of Fort Smith's Neighborhood Services Division is doing to reduce blight in the city. Don't miss Sunday's What's Up section full of entertaining content. This weekend's cover story is on Peyton Bowling, a Benville High School senior who recently won Miss Arkansas Teen. And Assistant Features Editor April Wallace will have a profile on Brandon Marcello, a Northwest Arkansas resident and prominent reporter nationally on college football. All of this and more will be available to our subscribers on our tablet and smartphone apps and at our websites, nwaonline.com and rivervalleydemocratgazette.com. Know the News is a weekly podcast brought to you by the newsrooms of the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette and River Valley Democrat Gazette. Again, I'm Dave Perosic, your podcast host this week. Thank you, as always, for listening. And don't forget to check us out next Friday for the next edition of the Know the News podcast. Until then, take care.